Imagine at just 13 years old, your mother is brutally and publicly murdered. And imagine if the prime suspects in her death are police, the very police who are in charge of investigating it. This Sunday will be the 40th Mother's Day Bridget Shuring has marked since the murder of her mum, brothel madam Shirley Finn. And as Lauren Day reports, the coroner is about to decide whether to finally hold an inquest. <coughs> It was the 1970s and Perth was known as the Wild West, as the money from mining paid for girls, gambling and sly grog. This used to be Shirley Finn's nightclub. It's now called the library, but when Shirley owned it, it was called Striparama. Shirley Finn was a Perth madam greenlighted by police to run brothels during the last big mining boom. It was essentially a, a franchise. There is no clear admission to this day that fees were paid up the chain, but they almost certainly were. And, and I believe that went to a political level as well, almost certainly. And as a result of that, they were able to run a virtual monopoly. But in a frontier town where sex sold and crime paid, the cost of being part of the action was high. On the 23rd of June, 1975, the protection she'd enjoyed ran out. Someone told her to dress up in her finest ball gown for a special meeting. The next morning, her body was found slumped over the steering wheel of her car with four bullet wounds in her head. Woke up, got ready for school. Went off to school and the headmistress came and got me in my first period. And what, what did she say? And she wrapped her arms around me and said, I don't know how you're going to live through this. And she started crying and took me into the headmistress office. And <clears throat> there was detectives there and they took me down to the police station. Shirley Finn's daughter, Bridget Shuring, was just 13 at the time. Well, she was just like a mother to me, kind, generous, just a mother. I didn't know any different, like, at work or anything. When did you find all of that out? After she died. She firmly believes police killed her mother, then spent four decades covering up the crime. Like, they're just trying to keep it quiet for as long as they can until everybody's dead. I know that. It was a brutal and public murder, but for 40 years, those responsible appear to have gotten away with it. We do know for a fact that she was due to go before a tax hearing two days later, and we know that she told numerous people that she was going to name names, and she wrote that in her, her letters, her tax uh, letters, that she was paying lots of other people and that she was fearful. So that is without doubt the, the strongest motive for her death. So do you believe that WA police were involved in her murder? Almost certainly. Author Juliet Wills has spent more than a decade researching the mystery that captivated a state, cast a long shadow over police and haunted a family. The coroner is currently considering holding an inquest. Juliet Wills says it needs to happen soon so those responsible for either the crime or the cover-up don't take the answers to their graves. How can it be that without doubt the number one suspects, even acknowledged by police, the number one suspects are police. They hold the file and don't actually have to answer a question to anyone. Both the initial investigation and a cold case review 30 years later failed to find the killer. But there have been numerous claims of evidence mishandling and witness intimidation. One of the first on the scene was John Manns. I was told to watch my back and that I was in danger. And I asked, what do you mean, the people that did it? And he said, no, the cops. He claims he saw Shirley Finn's white Dodge Phoenix on the morning of her death and parked beside it 
a mysterious green car. When he heard about the crime, he reported what he saw to police. I do remember distinctly that it was a front desk and it was a front desk sergeant that I spoke to. And I conveyed to him the story, um, well, the, the picture of what we'd seen and um, was told, it was, it was pretty quiet on the end of the line and I was told, thank you very much um, for, for your concern, but we've got all the information we need. And I said, but I've got the number of the car. My wife's taken the number and, and we've kept it. And um, he said, no, we've got everything we need, so thanks very much. WA's police commissioner last year said he would very much like to be able to say that he was the commissioner of police who presided over solving this crime and that he had no relationship with the senior detectives allocated to the inquiry 40 years ago, nor any desire to protect them if they were involved in corrupt or criminal activity. So you think this, this was where the body was discovered? This is where the murder took place? Juliet Wills believes she knows who was responsible, but is reluctant to name names for fear of legal action or reprisals. I believe I've sat face to face with the killer of Shirley Finn. Do you believe they'll ever be brought to justice? No, I don't. How much does it mean for you to have this case solved, to, to know who killed your mother? It would mean everything to me. I mean, it wouldn't make me feel... <laughs> it's not like it's going to go away if someone gets convicted. It's always going to be there. Do you think you'll ever have those answers? I'm hoping so. But I'm not getting my hopes up that high just to be let down again.